Hey everyone, I'm Esther and I'm back for another video with Lowland Kids. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk you through step by step how to sew up the curved hem t-shirt. This is it here and it turned out so cute. It's a beautiful staple, so we'll go with absolutely everything and there are of course different variations that you can do. There can be a few tricky parts to this t-shirt despite how simple it is. You can do a really simple folded neckline but in this video I attempted a bound neckline using a new binding attachment that I got and I'm pleased to say that it turned out really really well. So I can talk you through it in this video very briefly. Um, let us know if there are other questions and things about binding that you have because I'd love to do a video in future covering all the questions and things that can go wrong with binding. But anyway, I'll go through that really quickly in this video. And I also talk through how to use a twin needle, which again was my first time doing. And then the last thing which some people find really tricky is the curved hem because it is difficult to hem a curve. But I'll show you a really neat trick that makes it easy and gets you a really beautiful finish for that. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I know I sound surprised and I shouldn't be, but look, it takes a while to wrap your head around things like binding, doing hems and stuff like that. I totally get it. Um, but hopefully this video will put you at ease. Look how great it turned out. That's the ribbing there and then that's my curved hem. So I can't wait to make more of these because they're such a great staple to have for bub. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so here are the variations that you can do with this pattern. There's a regular t-shirt with the bound neck, there's a tank version and there's a placket version as well. I'm going to be doing the first version, so just a regular t-shirt with a really simple, neat, bound neckline. Here are all the things that are included when you purchase the pattern. There's info about what size to pick. I'm doing a size 18 to 24 months, I believe. I'd like it to be a little bit more oversized because it's supposed to be a slim and long pattern. And I've printed off my pieces here. I'm doing a short sleeve and that's a neck binding piece, the front and the back. I will be using a new binding attachment and also this binding that I purchased. It's 35 millimeters in width. You can easily cut your own, especially if you're using a stretch fabric. Just make sure that the direction of your stretch is going the correct way that you're cutting the binding. You want the binding to be stretchy, so keep that in mind. I'll be using this cotton rib for my main fabric. It matches the binding pretty perfectly. So as with all stretch fabrics, make sure that you're very careful with your pins because you can make small holes in the fabric, which you do not want because they'll grow over time. So either use very sharp pins or um, clips and make sure that you use a knit needle on your sewing machine because otherwise it will do the same thing. It will puncture your fabric and you don't want that to happen. As I mentioned earlier, there is a pattern piece for the neck binding. But because I'm using the binding attachment, um, I'm actually not going to cut my binding to size yet. This is because different fabrics will feed differently through the binding attachment. So some stretchier fabrics might need less while others might need more. So I'm just going to leave that as an open-ended piece of binding with lots of extra room. And then I'll also have some to practice with and make mistakes with later on. Now that I've cut out all my pieces, I'm going to put my front and back right sides together and I'm going to sew one shoulder seam. I'm going to use a mini zigzag stitch because we need our seams to be stretchy. We're working with a stretch fabric, so always use a stretch stitch. The easiest way to do that if you don't have a serger or an overlocker is to use a zigzag stitch. You can have a play with what works with your machine, what tension, what stitch length and stitch width. I tried a longer stitch length and when I pulled the fabric apart, you could see those stitches and so you don't want that. These were the settings that I ended up using. So it's a regular zigzag stitch with a stitch length of 1.4 and the stitch width was two. So it's actually quite a narrow zigzag, but that gives it just enough so that the fabric can stretch. The next step is to bind the neckline. I'm using the binding attachment, so that's why I've only done one shoulder and I'm going to bind this whole neckline in one go before I sew the other side. If you're doing a folded neckline, so not using a binding attachment and you're inserting your neck band similar to how you would a sleeve cuff, then you can go ahead and sew both shoulders and insert your neckline that way. Otherwise, in the next few steps, I'm talking through this binding attachment and this is my first time using it. So I've got my instruction manuals out. I'm trying to read through the instructions and hopefully I've wrapped my head around it so that I can explain it to you. 
I'm going to use this twin needle for my binding attachment. You can also just use a regular zigzag stitch. So that's up to you if you don't have a twin needle. Otherwise, these are inexpensive and you get a really beautiful finish if you choose to purchase one. I think twin needles are quite standard, so you don't have to have a special sewing machine or anything like that. You just need to purchase the twin needle and it should be compatible. Maybe double check with your uh, the type of sewing machine that you have. Otherwise, you just pop the twin needle in as you would when you're changing any other needle for your sewing machine. Because there are two needles, we need two spools of thread. And because I only had one spool of this um, light gray that matched my fabric, I just wound a bobbin. So that's a neat little trick that you can use instead of purchasing multiple spools, just wind an extra bobbin. And then my machine came with this extra little um, spool holder. If you don't have that, you can just set it up to the side as you would if you have like a large spool that you pop towards the back of your machine. And then to thread it up, you simply follow the steps for the first spool. So it should be exactly the same as how you normally thread up your machine, just that now you have two threads coming out to two needles. My sewing machine does have a specific setting for using a twin needle, so I'm just going to set that up here. But like I said before, this isn't actually essential. Your standard sewing machine should pick up on the fact that there's a twin needle and what will happen is that the bobbin thread will become a zigzag on the back. So do lots of test runs, play with your stitch length and also your stitch tension because you might have to adjust these. And once I was happy with that, I stuck down my binding attachment following the instructions that came with it. So I used blue tack so that I could stick it down and take it off whenever I needed. I cut my fabric on my binding fabric, sorry, on an angle and then I threaded it through the machine using a pin to pull it through and then I actually changed to using a scrap binding because I wanted to do lots of test runs so I wanted to get familiar with this binding attachment first so I think we'll do a separate video all about binding but for this video I'll just quickly walk you through it um, you line up your binding attachment and make sure that as you feed the binding fabric through notice where the needles come down onto the binding because you really want that to line up close to that left edge of the binding uh, but not so far as it goes off the edge and then not so much that it's in the middle like this. So it does take a little while to get it to line up properly but after practicing a few times it lined up really well. This is what the back looks like. That little zigzag encases the raw side of the binding on the wrong side of the garment and the top side has that really neat twin needle stitching. I had a bit more practice with the scrap fabric and then I decided to bite the bullet and use my real binding and have a go with that. Remember to have enough of your actual binding to test as well because your actual fabric might behave slightly differently to your scrap fabric even if it's supposed to be the same thing. So make sure you leave plenty of binding so that you can have a play with that so that you can grow confidence and not stuff up the real thing. Now that my neckline is finally bound and I'm feeling great about the attachment, um, I won't hesitate to use it in future because now I've got the hang of it. Like I said, I hope to do another video all about binding. So if you did struggle with how to use a binding attachment and you'd love to know more tips and tricks and how to get started, all that kind of stuff, leave your questions below, leave any problems that you have and we'll try to address that in a future video. With the neckline bound, I can sew my other shoulder seam using a normal zigzag stitch. I can trim off those extra binding pieces because they're just going to add bulk and make it look messy. And then I'm going to push my seam allowance towards the back of the garment and just tack it in place. Next, I've marked the middle point of my sleeve pieces and line up that middle point with the shoulder seam. That makes it nice and easy to line up the rest of the sleeve and then zigzag that in place. Next, I can put my right sides together and sew straight down the side seams, all the way from the sleeve down to the hem. Next is the tricky part about this curved hem tee, and that is hemming the curved hem. <laughs> Make your stitch length as big as possible. So for my machine, that goes all the way up to a five. And then we're essentially going to do a gathering stitch right on the edge of that hem. So about one or two mil from the edge, we're just going to sew a straight stitch all the way around the hem. Then we're going to take one of the threads and pull it so that we're sort of gathering the edge. We're more easing it, so not a full gather with lots of frills or anything like that, but we're easing it so that that edge actually becomes shorter in length and that will make it way easier to fold it up and hem it. Ease that edge as much as you need until you can comfortably fold that hem up. 
um, measure how much seam allowance you've got. I think it's about three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. Fold that up, pin it in place, and then you can use an iron to flatten it out and then we can sew it. While I'm at the iron, I'm also going to press up my sleeve hems. So again, I think the seam allowance is three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. Um, simply fold that up. You can pin it if you like or clip it um, and then press it down so it's nice and flat and that'll make it heaps easier to hem. I did pop some extra pins into my hem so it looked like this because it really helps for everything to stay in place. But again, just be really careful because pins can leave little holes in knit fabrics. I don't have a cover stitch. So again, I'm using my twin needle using the same settings as before and going nice and slow so that all of the stitches are nice and neat and that my hem stays in place. I'm also going to do my sleeve hems. And a little trick, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but it's to keep your garment inside out so that it creates a really nice flat surface for you to actually sew your sleeve hem. Especially with sewing kids clothes, your hems and your little sleeves and things can be really, really tiny. So keeping your garment inside out and then sewing the hem like that is actually a lot easier than having it the right way out. It'll make sense once you have a play with the machine. They aren't perfect, but this was my first time using the twin needle, so I was actually really happy with how these turned out. Now all that's left to do is to give it a press. If you're familiar with my videos, you'll know that I'm a little lazy when it comes to pressing. So really, you should be pressing your seams every time you sew them uh, before you sew the next seam, because then it just makes everything sit really beautifully flat and you can really get the best finished product that way. So I would recommend it. But if you're lazy like I am or just short on time, um, I like to sew everything at the, sorry, press everything at the end. And I only really press seams throughout the sewing process when it really, really needs to be done and it really makes a difference to the final product. So do as I say and not as I do, but definitely give your garment a really nice press at the end. And that's my tea finished because I don't want to put a pocket on because I think I'd like to do an applique or something like that. So I'm just going to keep the front plain for now. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. Like I mentioned in the video, I'm hoping to do a entirely separate video on binding. So let me know if you have questions, anything to do with binding that you've found in the past that has or hasn't worked. Leave it in the comments below so that we can help you with that. Um, and to share your tips and tricks. If you have any suggestions for what pattern I should sew up next with Lowland Kids, leave that in the comments as well. Have a look on the Lowland Kids Instagram and their website for so many cute pictures of kids and babies wearing these beautiful patterns. Um, if you've sewn up your own pattern, be sure to tag us, hashtag Lowland Kids. There's also a great Lowland Kids Facebook group. So if you have any questions and things you get stuck on, it's an amazing sewing community that you can get on there and you can help other people out and you can ask questions as well. And I'll see you for another video soon.